Thank you for visiting Pastor Wyatt TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWyatt.com. History remembers moments of extraordinary strength, skill, and determination. True greatness is forged by those who fulfill their destiny. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Past the Wired TV. This is not uh, Michael and I's regular unfiltered episode. This is our Breeders' Cup Win and You're In uh, series. We got three to talk about uh, this week. Three horses officially stamped their ticket to the Breeders' Cup with Win and You're In wins. But we may have seen some other Breeders' Cup horses who haven't stamped their ticket yet, but uh, I'm pretty sure at, at Saratoga on Saturday, we saw a few that probably have Breeders' Cup on their mind. Yeah, it was a phenomenal weekend of racing here in Saratoga. Obviously, Saturday and Sunday, there were grade one races that you're going to see a lot of those horses move forward to the Breeders' Cup. Obviously, not everything is a Breeders' Cup win and you're in, but the horses, to me personally, um, this weekend, I think we had three impressive horses that are definitely contenders. Um, and then I think there's a bunch of others. I mean, you know, obviously Epicenter and the Traverse. Um, and then as you go down the line with uh, Malathat and everything else that we saw over the weekend was pretty impressive. I'm probably missing a bunch of horses, but. Yeah. Oh, there's so many to talk about really, but but let, 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 let's start with the winning your in horses because we, we're kind of obligated to do that. So let, 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 let's do that. And uh, let's start Saratoga. Let's start with, with Gufu and Gufu, 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 and uh, Saul Banza. I always get his name confused in my head for some reason. And I, I mean no disrespect to him or his connections because he's a real, real, really nice horse. Um, what'd you think? I mean, it's, look, you won the Sword Dancer last year and it was interesting as I was talking to guys. Um, you know, he's been a little... You know, I know last year there was a ton of buzz about this horse, and especially going in the Breeders' Cup, and he didn't fire. Um, and then he's kind of not reclaimed the spot that he was at last year. So, but when I, you looked at him, he was definitely a horse for the course. I mean, winning the Sword Dance of the year before, and I kind of saw something in the paddock that might lend to why he runs at Saratoga. It might not run as well elsewhere, um, which we can get into. But what are you, what's your take? Well, you, you know, I liked him in the Sword Dancer, and I'll tell you why. And it's kind of a knock against him in the Breeders' Cup at the same time. Uh, the horse has developed, a, you know, like you alluded to, he's been a little inconsistent. Uh, and they've talked about he's tricky to ride. He's, he's he, he, you know, uh, been a difficult horse to train for Clement, and, and he's been inconsistent. But I've noticed over the course of the past couple of years, which he's been a, a you know a major stakes player over over that time, there are two things when when they happen, he tends to jump up and run one of his better races. One is when they put the blinkers back on him when they've been off. Next time out, that first time with the blinkers on, he kind of wakes him up. Two, um, when they take him off Lasix, and Saturday, they did both. They took him off Lasix and put the new blinkers on, and he ran one of his better races in a in a while. And and honestly, that's kind of what you know. It's not really an you know an obvious angle that handicappers might notice, astute handicappers would. But it's the kind of thing I look for, and I noticed that you know those two angles generally in his form cycle. And when I look at a horse like that, I look at his lifetime past performances, and I notice that when those either of those things happen, he jumps up and runs a better race. They were both happening. For the first time on Saturday, and he jumped up and ran one of his better races in a, in, in a while. That won't be the scenario come come Keeneland, you know. Right. Uh, so I have a tendency to think that he'll regress a little bit and won't run that jump up race. Now, there's always the chance, and you as a trainer can maybe speak better to this than I can. There's always a chance that you, you know you find something out about a horse, you you tweak something, you know, a light bulb goes off, as they say. But I think with an older horse like him, the odds of that are probably a little bit more rare. So I tend to think it was that combination, which is consistent with his prior form patterns and cycles, 
that kind of kind of made him run big. And I don't know that he's going to be able to do that. Yeah. So, I mean, as you get into these older horses, they become true professionals. I mean, it's pretty much consistency, right? You, you have an idea if they're going to show up or they're not. What's interesting with this horse and what I saw in the sword dancer on Saturday was he has a shoe on called a Sigafoo shoe. And it's usually for horses that have really bad feet. And when you look at some of the photos of his right hind, he's got a lot of reddening. It's a white foot. So you can actually see some of the bruising he has on that foot. And so okay. he might be a horse that has foot issues. And so he fires on softer turf courses because it's not as tough on him. Um, Keeneland typically plays with a softer turf course. So the form might transfer, but it could be why he ran into a wall last year you know, on the West Coast, when you have, you know, running in California, as we've talked about before, is like running on concrete. So if you're a horse with any foot problems, you're definitely not going to fire. And it could also be a reason why he might be a bit more difficult to train. Sometimes horses, the older horses are tricky. Some are very, some just want to do what they want to do every single day and train very hard. Um, there's others that, you know, like an older man, you're a bit arthritic. You got some soreness here. Sometimes you're grumpier. So if That's he's, if he's, if he's got foot problems that plague him every now and again, there might be days where he really doesn't want to do it. And keeping him consistently training at the top of his game might be difficult, which is why we could see him fire off a big one when you're able to get everything to go right. And, and maybe not so much when you're not able to. The other thing, Saratoga, some horses come here and completely change and they flourish for whatever right. reason. And Christoph's got a barn over on the Oklahoma track where you can gallop on the grass. So that could be another thing. And I don't know because I don't know how this horse trains, but you could have a horse that has some foot trouble, train him on the turf every day and gallop him on the turf because you have the turf track to breeze on, but also they have the jumps where they have the jumps horses out. You can gallop horses on that grass course. So I'd have turf horses that I'd take out there all the time just because we had the option. So it's a huge help if you have a horse that has sore feet. So it could be a combination of things of, He's getting a little, uh, he's getting a little bit more comfort in his feet from training in Saratoga. If Chris, I'm not putting words, in, I have no idea how he trains this horse, but right. it could be yeah. that, and, and it could be the track that really helps this horse step up when he's up here. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, I, I never knew that obviously about his feet, but, uh, that's an interesting uh, observation for sure. I'm going to say, you know, in light of everything that we've discussed and, and, and what I think I'm going to say. He's probably a pretender going into Breeders' Cup, Breeders' Cup to turf. As good as and, and I respect him. You know what I mean? He's a good horse. Right. On his best day, he can run with the better horses. But I just think on that particular day, we're going to see some monsters. We're probably going to see some Euros. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're going to see some other horses that are, are, are ready to peak. And we may have saw his peak race yesterday. And it may be a combination of what you observed at Saratoga and what I observed also in his in in, in his form pattern. Uh, so Gufu's in, we'll see him in, at, at Keeneland, but we're going to, we're going to call him a, a pretender. Uh, yeah, I think, and, and to go off that, I think this group, uh, boys, older boys, grass horse in America's weak. Um, you know, I think weak. if, if you look at, at Hamo, he was a pretty average horse in France before he was purchased and brought over Chad Brown. Chad's a great trainer, so I'm not knocking Chad, but very average horse, kind of group three horse in Europe, not quite making the grade there, comes to the U.S. and is on the top of the division. So to me, once you bring over the top of the division from Europe, and sometimes you get the top and sometimes you get the second string, I think their second stringers run with our first stringers all day in that division this year. I agree with that 100%. And I have a feeling, you know, I don't know. I've been trying to follow as best I could of who's coming, who's thinking about it. Who's not. But I have a feeling that this year we're going to see some of the good ones. Uh, yeah. Especially when you think about how good the Euros did two years ago or three years ago, whatever it was at Keeneland. They seemed to really like that course that year on the grass. They won, they won a bunch of races on the grass, I think, uh, well, a bunch of them. So uh, I have a feeling we'll see some of the really good ones coming over. Uh, and like you said, even their second stringers can run with, with our first stringers. And I would say in all the divisions on the grass, that's 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 true to an extent. Um, let's move to Delma. Yeah. Okay. It's the sunshine, a little bit, a little bit cooler weather than uh, we'll, that. We'll 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 Delma. Um, we saw kind of a new, a new, a new horse emerge that really wasn't talked about as a Breeders' Cup type of horse. Uh, he was coming off two nice wins. He cut back to seven eighths. We're talking about Laurel River. 
Uh, and I was, I, I realized he got a great trip and he kind of saved all that ground and American theorem lost a lot of ground and had to go wide, but I was super impressed on the cutback by Laurel river. And I think he's a horse that is just now, um, after, after, after the connections, you know, I think the Baffert and Judmont being very patient with him, I think he's just now blossoming and, uh, you know, Bob was on record saying that he thinks he'll like two turns better than one. And the Breeders' Cup mile at Keeneland is, interestingly enough, a two-turn mile, not a one-turn mile. Uh, and he's got the option of, I guess, cutting back again in the sprint to six. But I, I think, honestly, he's a contender in either spot. Yeah, I mean, it was interesting to look at him. And he's a son of into mischief at an empire maker mare. So he's got the breeding to go long. Um, obviously explosive at the end of the race. I mean, yeah, as you saw, the seas kind of parted and he just, he went right through, but um, still impressive. I mean, I don't think you could say that American theorem had enough of the trip that it hindered him, but I mean, it hindered him a bit, but I, I think, think he would have been closer. I don't I think, think he was going to win. I think the, the winner was clear and the winner right. was pretty impressive. And, you know, obviously as you and I keep talking, we've got so many of these good two-turn dirt horses that are going to be in the mile or the classic you know, you're kind of at a stage of, well, where, where do you go with these horses? Um, obviously, the mile division, you know, you, you now have Jack Christopher in there, um, probably. And then you've got, you know, so he moves into that spot. We'll see if Lightline can get the two turns. Um, you know, obviously, Bob thought he could. Otherwise, he wouldn't have, you know, ditched the Pacific Classic and gone this route with this horse. So it'll be interesting to see how the Pacific Classic shakes out and what that mile division comes up as. But you know, the, the horse has the ability to go Breeders' Cup classic distance. And I think Bob even mentioned that two turns being a classic horse that he could do the two turns. He's just didn't want to take on that top. Did say that, right. Right. Yeah. See, I was thinking he was he was probably leaning towards the, the Breeders' Cup mile being two turns. But, you know, I like him a lot better in the mile and I like him a lot better in the sprint. I don't know that I'm ready to throw him in the mix in the classic just yet uh you, you know even even if we take flight line out of the mix i don't know that he's uh you know gonna beat life is good and some of those other horses that head towards the classic i would lean towards running him in the mile where i think he's 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 really tough and i wouldn't be opposed again i'm not a trainer you guys are but i wouldn't be opposed to thinking he had a shot cutting back to the sprint six furlongs you, you, you know Seven furlong Pat O'Brien is a fast race. If you can win that, you can win a sprint, you know? And if you get a lot of speed in the Breeders' Cup race, and now we know Jackie's Warrior may not be as invincible as everybody thought in the sprint. I mean, if we had this conversation last week, everybody, a lot of people said, thought Jackie's Warrior was a foregone conclusion to go undefeated for the year and win the sprint. And yeah. as horses will do, they humble and fool everybody. And, you know, you know, he went and got beat, I thought, on the square. Uh, I don't think, yeah. you know, I didn't see any excuse. No, I think Jackie's Warrior ran a huge race, but I agree. You know, I mean, the the time was extremely impressive. I mean, it was 124, which for seven eights is is incredible. So, Great. I mean, I think I think Jackie's Warrior is a better six for a long horse than a seven for a long horse. So to me, him cutting back, he becomes a lot tougher. Um, but no, I mean, now he suffered a defeat. And as we've talked about, and some people don't know, it, it does weigh on a horse, right? So when they win, they're on top of their game. You know, they understand wow. that they've won. They, the confidence continues to spill over as they go in other spots. But when they lose, you, you now have to rebuild their confidence somewhere. So whether you take that horse back and you train him into the Breeders' Cup and you try and keep him at the six furlongs or let him beat up on some workmates, um, not saying he's a horse. I mean, there's other horses and, and like kiss a lot the other day in the, the grade three, I told the owners that, Hey, look, even if he gets beat, he's, he's going to run. He doesn't care. Like he comes the same horse every time he's going to show up. So if Jackie's warrior is that type of horse, it probably didn't bother him, but it is a little bit different. You know, now that you've lost a race going seven, eights, I think he's tough cutting back. Um, but I, I agree. I think the mile division comes up way softer than the classic. I thought it was interesting hearing the chatter that Brad Cox might cut back Cyberknife to the mile that's, division. That's true. Um, which I think that adds another superior horse in that division. So, you know, if you stack up the classic and you're looking at the classic, you, you have six or seven extremely good horses in that division. 
And so the mile right now might have two, three, you know, around there. So to me, yes, I would agree with you. That's the route I would go is just say, look, why take on seven monsters when we can only take on two? Right. And it, and it really is looking like a very interesting Breeders' Cup in, 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 that, in that regard with potential monsters all over the place. You, yeah. You know, uh, and, and like we touched base on earlier on, on some of the other Breeders' Cup shows, the three-year-olds look like they're going to be able to make plenty of noise. You know, yeah. they, they really, really do, uh, including Nest, the filly, you know. And I, I found out the other day that the filly Moira, who won the Queen's Plate with, with a very visually impressive move, is looking towards the Breeders' Cup as well, and they want to bring her. And that makes it even more exciting, you, you know, because she really, you, you know, looked impressive beating beating males as as well. Uh, they should keep her against the Phillies, though. I, I wouldn't take that Philly run against the boys yet. I think she'll have her hands full with Ness to begin with. And, you know, I'd well, love... Well, she did beat the boys in the Queen's play. No, for sure, but it's a different Not caliber. Not the kind of boys she's going to face, that's true. Different that's caliber true. of boys. Um, Absolutely. You know, and that's actually really interesting. Um you know, as I've watched the Queen's Plate and I'm watching some of these races around the country, it's an interesting angle that I would maybe sway some owners towards and say, hey, look, let's maybe find some horses that can run on poly track because it's a huge purse. And they're not really, because it's on the synthetic, most of the dirt horses aren't going. Right, right. Yeah. And you, you, you got to get, a, you know, a, a, a Canadian bread. But uh, yeah, no, I, I, I agree that race doesn't come up as tough as you would think a race of that stature does uh yeah. I'm surprised more people don't target it from from from, from over here that's i remember when adina springs had that whole canadian bread program and they were breeding and i mean she's adina springs bread as well but Absolutely. they they would crush it because they breed a lot of horses in canada they have their ontario bread or canadian breads and then they'd have their uh u.s division from kentucky but they would just clobber it with really good horses because they had the horses up there already right uh mo moving along we saw the ballerina on sunday yeah and i think we saw another i am going to say it, another potential star i i i i think that horse i'm i'm as excited about her heading into the breeders cup as 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 all the others that we're talking about and that's not going to be a popular opinion when people are talking about you know flight line as being you know the greatest thing since some of the horses behind me we got kugay with Seattle slew over there behind but I mean, I, I think she's super impressive. And I, I, I think that Chad took a little different approach with her. You know, usually when he's got a really good one, he'll throw him right into the stakes, you know, uh, even a grade one. But with her, he kind of progressively found those, you know, conditioned allowance races for her and she progressed nicely. And I think we really saw her blossom on, on Sunday. And, you know, I'm always impressed with, and, I don't know if you see it the same, you know, from a horseman's perspective, but from a handicapping perspective, when when you take a horse and you run them or like I say, throw them to the wolves for the first time, I'll usually give them a pass to get beat and come back and be tougher second time against quote the wolves. But when they throw them to the wolves the first time and they're able to just handle them like they were those same allowances, that's always impressive to me. And the Philly, you know, the Phillies that she beat, I think are, are, are a nice bunch of fast sprinting Phillies. And she did it the right way. Uh, yeah. I think there's definitely more in the tank. I think she's absolutely a contender in the Philly Mayor Sprint uh, and, a, and, a, and a handful of a contender. I agree. I think she ran a phenomenal race. Um, you know, it's interesting. I think Chad Brown mentioned they'd have to lay her off twice because she had chips in her ankles, which they right. then had to go remove and, and then bring her back. So obviously he's taking a more conservative approach with her than he's done with others. It's paid off huge. I remember working with her mother, Salty Strike, who Kenny McPeak had, I think we ran her in the test. I'm pretty sure we ran her in the test. Um, so the Philly actually looks a lot like her mom, which is quite okay. interesting. In this game, you get so many people that say, you know, they really want to try and say these horses look like the sire. Most of the time they look like their mothers with a little bit of the stallion put in. So she's got a little bit more bulk on her than from Ghost Sapper, but she's very much has her mother's frame. And she very much has her mother's markings. Her mother just had a little white star in between uh, her forehead and not much else on her. So it's kind of cool when you see progeny you worked with doing well on the racetrack. But 
Um, she is, to me, an extremely impressive filly. I mean, that was as solid a group as you could put together, and she manhandled them. I agree. Or woman handled them, sorry. In, in right. Case, yeah. Well, yeah, no, I, I, I agree. We're, we're 100% on, on the same page with her. I think she was really really super impressive and i think uh you, you know i i think there's a lot more there uh that will that, that, that we'll see uh well and you would know it from a handicapping perspective when these horses make these jumps and they jump in against tougher horses they do move forward off of that especially if yeah. they win or they run a good race so she is going to probably continue to improve and so the fact that she took on those fillies and that was the interesting thing. I mean, they went a little hot on the front end. She had a great spot where she was sitting. There was not a whole lot of reason why. I mean, Cece didn't really get up as close as she probably could have been or should have been. Um, but I, I don't think it would have made much of a difference even if she had. So it's just interesting seeing how that Philly, you know, she sat in the pocket, the two Phillies in front, Bella Sophia, and I forget who went with her, went too quick. And we're hoping to maybe hang. And that Philly just swallowed them up and said goodbye. Yeah, no, I, I I agree, and I guess well th those are our three Breeders' Cup winning year ends. But let's let's close out this show by talking a little bit about Epicenter and the Travers and how good he is or might be, and if there's more there. And what's what's your take on him? You know, he he he's better than I thought he was. I'll admit it. You know, I thought he was good. I didn't think he was phenomenal. Uh, at this point, I think he's 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 real good you know uh he, he, you know he showed in the gym dandy that he's really grown up and he put an exclamation point on that uh, on on saturday and was you know ultra impressive uh what, what's your what's your take on him and, and let me ask you this do you think we'll see him again before the classic or will steve maybe try and train him right to it or give him a shot with all the horses first what's your take yeah, so he's super impressive horse, right? So looking at him in the paddock, and I kept trying to, I was trying to help people see what was going on in the paddock, but there was a delay with Wi-Fi, I'd take like a video, and then it would take two hours to load. So I was trying to get people to actually see some of these horses before they ran. Um, he was completely the standout, like heads and tails above from a physical standpoint, from a racehorse standpoint, just looks different compared to everybody else in the race. So you kind of knew going in that he was the horse to potentially that you had to beat. And then you saw him in the paddock and you're kind of like, there's not a whole lot that looks like him in this race. So Steve had him as perfect as you could have a horse. The question is, what does Steve want to do? I mean, I know with Curlin, Curlin did run, you know, after he won and then they ran him again, you know, he'd usually give him a one month prep out when he'd run that horse in the classic. Um, I'm trying to think of some of his other big horses. I can't remember what he did with Gunrunner. Um, but Gunrunner, I, Gunrunner won, I don't remember either. I yeah. think, I'm not, I don't, I don't remember. I don't want to miss, well, miss Let's put it, let's put it this way. He knows how to win the classic. So we do know that. Right. So know that. He'll, he'll, under, he'll understand what he has to do with the horse. I think the horses won two races easily. I don't see why they wouldn't, but I don't think they need to. I think if you give this horse a little bit of a breather right now and let him, what we're in, a, we're in the beginning of September. So you've got what, you've got another chance to do one more prep and run. I think sometimes if you give the horse the eight weeks and bring him in as a fresh horse, you might have an even better horse, especially as we keep seeing this horse develop and develop and develop. But at the end of the day, none of these races have taken anything out of him. But I think what could happen, which is potentially what you'd want to avoid with a horse like him at this stage is, you know, they're already saying that life is good is going to lean towards the, the Woodford, right? And they're already talking about different spots where some of these other ones are going to pop up. If you can avoid those ones until you run on the day, I think it makes a little bit more sense than pressing him a month out against older boys to then take on older boys in November. I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. Uh, I, I think that would be the smart play. And this horse has already shown he can run very, very well fresh. And I, I would love to see that kind of approach, have him in there, you know, fresh off a layoff, breathing fire and let him get his first taste uh, of those horses that day. But that would be 
that would be a tall order. I mean, you'd be asking a three-year-old off since the Travers to come in and not just win the classic, but win the classic against horses like flight line, uh, especially if he wins the, you know, the Pacific classic next week and uh, life is good who you and I both think, you know, very, very high up. So that, that, that would be a tall order. So, uh, but it would be interesting to see. And I think that might be, you know, might be his best play. Uh, those, are, those are really the only preps you have left. Could and God well, help us if he does. You got, you got the awesome go again. You got huh? the, the awesome again. So the awesome again, the Woodford. He could go PA. You mean the Woodward? You, you mean the Woodward? The Woodward. Sorry, Woodward. And the Jockey Club Gold Cup. We got yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, I think I think there's some options there for him for sure. Um, you know, God help us if he goes another three-year-old race. <laughs> I hope he does it. Um, but no, I don't think so. yeah. he's got, he's got what he's got, he's got a month, you know, from the day he ran, he's got about 20, 28 days until the Pennsylvania Derby. Uh, so let's hope right. he doesn't go that route. But, you know, it's, I think that would honestly, if I was the trainer seeing how easily he won two races and I want to give him an easy race and win another race and keep him moving, I'd go in the PA Derby and just say, you right. know what? Let's go there. Let's give him another race. Keep him tight. Let's not take on older boys. And, you know, but it would, it would really be uh, heartbreaking for the rest of us who really <laughs> want to win the Pennsylvania Derby, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, we're, I don't, we're not, I don't think we're going that route with, with kiss a lot. We've got a couple of different options on the table, but you know, I, I watched the other morning white Abario breeze and he breathes like a monster. So you know, you've got some of these other three-year-olds shaking out of where they're going. You know, you'd be really upset if Epicenter says, you know, we're just going to do an easy prep race on the PA Derby and go from there. But I, you still have to run into Taiba, right? Because Taiba's going PA Derby. So it's Is not he going to the PA Derby? I'm not sure of that. Is he? Well, I think there was I thought he may go. I thought he may go to the awesome again. Well, and I thought there was talk about taking him to the Pennsylvania Derby. If I was, look, if I was Bob, Bob knows how to win the PA Derby too. I'd take the horse there. Let him get a win. He ran second in the Haskell. Take him in, I think, what, from the Haskell to uh, the PA Derby, you're getting what? You're getting like eight weeks. Right. I, don't, I don't know the exact time. So take him there, let him beat up on three-year-olds, then go against older boys. I mean, because Bob now has to juggle three horses. He has to juggle country grammar, Taiba, right. and uh, Laurel River to figure out where he's going with each of them. So, you know, to me, you'd run Taiba against three-year-olds in the PA Derby. Yeah. Um, it's not a win and you're in, which I think it should be. And that may come into play, but who knows? We'll see. Uh, but exciting, man. They, they run them in the cotillion. The cotillions went, I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> can't go against Phillies. Phillies can go against boys, you know? Um, um, super exciting Breeders' Cup. I'm, I'm really, really, really looking forward to it on many different levels. Uh, I think it's shaping up. I mean, the Breeders' Cup always is exciting, always is, you know, a, a, a spectacle for us. But, but I think this year is really looking, looking special. You know, I mean, just, just no, I, so many potential really good horses, you know? Yeah, I think in years past, it's been a little bit of a letdown in the dirt division. You know, you'd have these good grass horses come from Europe and the dirt division was like, ah, you know, there's some good horses running around in here and they're grade one horses, but now it's like you have all the best dirt horses still around going right. to compete against each other and you're going to you know the grass division is pretty good for the girls um you've got some really nice juveniles popping out everywhere so it's really shaping up to be something super exciting this year i mean uh i'm i'm like over the moon right now thinking of how these horses are going to match up against each other because to see, you know, Epicenter take on Life is Good, and if Flightline tries to go on that race, and, you know, some of these other horses that we're seeing blossom at this time of year, it's just, it's an incredible field all the way through on most of these boy dirt races, and the girls, too. I mean, the girls have been running phenomenal, and I know that there was some, I watched, we were there, Claire Era, I mean, she hit the gate twice before she broke, so, you know, you, you can probably be sure as long as she came out of that race in good shape that she's going to be back on her game against those older girls so you know even that division with Ness thrown in there and you know if Wayne Lucas can get secret oath right to get her to perform where she once was it's exciting um you know I I, I hope he gives her a little bit of a breather and gets her where she needs to be and, and then takes on because 
She was, you could see her the other day when she was in the paddock. She was not the net, she was not the secret oath we saw in the Oaks. She needs a little bit of weight. She looks a little tired, you know. And so I think give her a breather and then go into the, into the distaff. Yeah, he's he's not the breather type, but we'll see what happens. You know, yeah. he likes he likes he likes to run. So yeah, exactly. We'll see what happens. But uh, hey, great show, exciting. Uh, you know, Breeders' Cup stuff coming up. Uh, we'll be running out of these winning your in races before you know it, and we'll be at the Breeders' Cup itself. So uh, I don't even know how. Live from the paddock, right? No, we haven't said that up yet, but you never know. No, we, we, we may. Uh, we live from the paddock. Uh, but it's going to be exciting. So uh, I guess uh, I guess that's a wrap. And ciao for now. So enjoy. You're going to dinner in Saratoga. I hope somewhere good. No, family dinner. Family oh, dinner. Family I, dinner. I have done nothing but work since I got here. I've had no time with my beautiful wife, even though she's been around me all day long. We have right. no one-on-one -on -one relaxed time, and I've had no time with my in-laws except saying good morning, dropping off the dogs, and coming in at night and picking them up. So. Uh, it's nice to have a little family time R and R tonight. So you're having dinner at home. It's a home dinner. Well, the nice thing that a lot of people don't realize is my mother-in-law is a cordon bleu trained chef, so it's ah. just as good as going out. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know because there's some really good restaurants in 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 Saratoga. So, uh, but yeah. okay, enjoy it. Uh, we'll reconvene soon enough. Always a pleasure. Send my regards to everybody and uh, ciao for now. Certainly will. Have a great evening. Seek and Destroy is a grade three winner. Um, what I particularly like about this call is he's got a great, strong shoulder, a very strong hip. And when you watch him walk for a horse that has this weight, he's actually got a phenomenal athletic movement to him. So we're going to have him walk and uh, kind of show you how all this physical works together with the horse himself. So typically for a yearling of this size, with this type of weight and muscle and bone, you don't see a horse that's this light on his feet and this athletic. As you watch him go by, he uses every piece of himself really efficiently. He stretches for ground with his front feet. He really pushes off with his hind feet. When you watch him turn, which is a big piece, he's actually very light on his feet as he turns. There's no sloppy movement there. He knows how to use himself. So there's a lot of athleticism with this horse. He's by Warfront, who's a very good sire. Training, but it's a phenomenal physical of a horse. You can't really fault him for much. Colt here by Warfront, by the sire of three champions, great one winning colts such as Lines of Battle, War of Will, Omaha Beach, and Air Force Blue. <laughs> I have to outspend somebody else. I think I said, I, I, I don't like to take credit, but I think I said it best myself once when someone said to me, trust me. I said, there's only two people in the world I trust. One's me, the other one's not you. So. <laughs> All this and more on Unfiltered on Past the Wire TV. Here with some exciting news. The RF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Been there, done that.
Nobody does it better.